Terror in the skies above Ukraine's cities, swarms of kamikaze drones unleashed by Putin. Cheap and deadly weapons rapidly changing the landscape of conflict. We're seeing a transformation of war as we've known it. Drones aren't new, but the scale of their use in Ukraine is unprecedented. A real evolution in terms of how drones have been used. So how are drones shaping the fight and is this the future of warfare? UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, drones to you and me, have played a vital role since the very beginning. In the first few weeks of this full-scale invasion, Ukraine promoted the Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2 to folklore status. Bayraktar. Strikes on Russian units were an early military and PR success. But since withdrawing its forces from the north of the country, Russia adapted its approach to the Bayraktars. They brought in air defenses and appear to have shot down a number of these TB2s. And so both sides have turned to smaller military and even commercial drones for surveillance and reconnaissance missions. One of the most transformational uses of, of drones so far in, in the war is that they've helped the artillery to basically strike with precision and take out targets. Using drones this way allows scanning the battlefield and locating targets in relative safety. The risk is a UAV being shot down or captured by an anti-drone gun jamming its signal rather than soldiers facing fire on the ground. They become so important to Ukraine that governments say they're creating a drone army, calling on citizens to donate their commercial UAVs to the military. And they're not just used for surveillance. Both sides have been modifying commercial drones so they can carry and drop small munitions. We've seen a real evolution in terms of how drones have been used over the course of this conflict. And then there's these, so-called kamikaze drones. Armed with an explosive, they fly into a target, blowing themselves up in the process. The US has pledged around 1,400 of these kamikaze drones to Ukraine, 700 switchblades and 700 Phoenix Ghosts. And now Putin has his hands on Iranian-made Shahed's, using them to devastating effect. They very deliberately target civilian areas. Russia is just trying to spread terror and fear across Ukraine. It's reported that Russia is running low and expensive precision-guided missiles, but the Iranian Shahed 136s costing a fraction of the price of a cruise missile, allowing Russia to continue its bombardment of Ukraine's infrastructure. Ukraine is scrambling to find an answer to the Shaheds. Fighter jets are sent to intercept them. Air defense systems are set up around key targets, and if that fails, they're using rifles and handheld anti-aircraft rockets known as manpads. But still, some get through. From a defensive point of view, what the Ukraine has in place now is insufficient to basically uh, uh, protect against, especially swarms of these military munitions coming in. Kyiv has called on the West to provide more air defense systems. But the small, low-flying, slow moving Shaheds sent in waves can evade and overwhelm air defense systems programmed to target fast-moving missiles and jets. It's actually a real problem. How do you set up a sensor system for air defenses that is identifying not every bird as an incoming drone? Experts say they need more systems like the German Gepard, a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun as a cheaper and more sustainable alternative to missiles worth hundreds of thousands of pounds shooting down a 20 grand drone. But even then, it might not be enough. There's always going to be a blind spot. Iran denies it is supplying these weapons, but the US and Ukraine say that hundreds, if not thousands, have been bought by Russia. And that Iran is providing training and tech support from Crimea. Even a few hundred will make it a nightmare for the Ukrainian defenders. Drones are not new, but what we're seeing in Ukraine is shaping the future of warfare. A first look at drones in a large-scale conflict. What I think is different here is that just the widespread nature of it. We're seeing a transformation of war as we've known it. And the future of war is one where you have a very small component of boots on the ground. Um, and they are, these boots on the ground are then augmented by surrogates. And, and much of it will be technology and, and, and drones play a key role in this. 